Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, Adobe Express and Firefly, Enabling Student Success in Higher Education. We'll go ahead and get started. I'll turn it over to our first presenter today, Tony Lista. Welcome, Tony. Good morning. Thank you, Amanda. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are. On behalf of Adobe, thank you for joining us today. I'm Tony Lista. I work in our re we're the resellers, uh, partners, and our state, local government and education customers who use Creative Cloud, Acrobat and Sign. Today, we're here to discuss and show you some amazing features of Adobe Express and our in integrated generative AI Firefly. For a couple minutes, we're gonna ask you to tell us a little bit about yourselves, uh, your experience with Firefly and uh, uh, what you're looking to get out of this uh, session today, uh, what group you're in, IT, if you're an educator, training and learning, gives us a little bit of uh, information about the type of audience that we're going to be supporting. We have uh, just under 200 participants uh, so far. We're expecting a little bit more than that. So. We're delighted to see the mix. Typically, what we see is a, uh, uh, a good mix in these sessions of educators and training. And it looks like the training and learning side of it has got the larger uh, representative uh, education as well, IT at about 10%. So looks like the real practical users are on the, on the, uh, the session. And uh, from the standpoint of experience level, it looks like many of you are just beginning to take a look at Express and AI, maybe you're past users of Creative Cloud, and uh, it looks really excited. We're very excited to, uh, to, get, to give you a sense. Good. I think we're going to move on to the next piece here. So as I had, uh, as I had said earlier on, uh, the session is called Adobe Express and Firefly, Enabling Student Success in Higher Education. What I'm gonna ask you to do as you listen and watch today is to invite you to think about how the features and functions of Express and Firefly can and will transform your job and education and also enhance student success. For the next few minutes, please allow me to set the table uh, to speak with you and provide you some background about Express, some research that Adobe and some of our commission researchers have, have done that show us the value of creative tools in the education space. And then I'll turn it over for uh, to my colleague, um, Jim, who will uh, be the focus and uh, provide you uh, the demo that you're looking for. So. Without further ado, this is probably not new to you, uh, but as we uh, looked at Creative Cloud and some of the tools that we provide the, uh, the education space, we're very aware that uh, some of the, the challenges that you face, one of which, which is enrollment. There are 400, 4 million fewer students attending college uh, since uh, 2022. U.S. enrollment is altogether down. And to further complicate things, feedback from research Adobe, Adobe has, has commissioned indicates parents and students are beginning to see some less value from a degree when evaluating costs and other factors. And employers are looking for more more than uh, traditional degrees. They're looking for a combination of critical thinking, superior communication, and di digital literacy. So this is the background. This is uh, kind of how we'd like you to think about, you know, um, where Creative Cloud and Firefly might be able to fill in the, the space for helping your student learners succeed, help you as educators provide the the valuable content that will give them the skills. And then as students get ready for their professional career, what, what type of tools uh, employers are looking for? Trainers, educators, students, IT, career services, research and employers will all benefit from 
creative, creative credentials. Our research is clearly showing this. Adobe just released a research white paper entitled The Creative Edge. We'll tell you a little bit more about that with a QR code later on. And how digital cred credentials unlock emerging skills in the age of AI. In this study, it was found that digital credentials have emerged as powerful predictors of, of essentials to success. Creative skills, the ability to communicate, and the ability to put ideas uh, in a in a format that that makes sense for employers is what we're what we're seeing, and it's sec second uh, in demand that the skills real world experience and uh, past work experience. So together, creative skills, the ability to communicate uh, in a creative way. And then having the background and experience are the skills that employers are now looking for as student learners enter the workforce. As a result, our work with clients has shown us that adding creative digital credentials to curriculums outside of the traditional creative disciplines, uh, graphic designers, the arts, the video, the uh, the architects, those folks that have been used to using these tools. What we're finding now is that if you add these additional creative skills to business, research, the science, the engineering, and med medicine, that uh, studies have indicated that 53% of hiring managers said that having digital credentials demonst demonstrates a can candidate's propensity for self-motivation, professional development, and is a big indicator for future success. Jim will show you a little bit more about this and provide a little bit more detail, but this is really what I want you to concentrate on, is that you're probably thinking about creative skills in traditional creative classes. We see the value of you having these creative skills regardless of uh, the background. And I can tell you an anecdotal story about my own kids, one that's in a business major and another one that's in an, an architecture major at uh, two schools here in the Northeast. When they were applying for internships, they used Creative Cloud uh, to uh, re redo their traditional resume. They, add, they put uh, creative content in their videos and, and pictures of the work that they've done. And there's no doubt in my mind that using that type of format to look for a job as an intern gave my kids an edge that uh, other kids didn't. So it's an area that we believe strongly in. Adobe has got a lot of experience helping out with these types of things. We've been working with the student mission uh, to help institutions for more than 25 years. And the research indicates that we're on the right track with uh, helping you to use these creative tools to help your students get the skills they need to be competitive in the digital world that, that we're facing. Finally, in fact, beyond st student success, student, uh, Adobe has some experience with helping schools. We have a couple of creative pl programs that uh, we can tell you more about, which uh, schools that are uh, have an interest of taking on a full creative content for all their student learners. Here's some experience that we've learned. First-year students in courses using creative tools achieve an average of 2.4 times higher grades. Hires for grads with creative skills have grown 78% in the last two years. And uh, hires that have, have higher starting salaries when they have these creative skills. And finally, 80% of students from an enrollment standpoint in uh, studies that we've done have indicated that schools that offer them these new and innovative digital and creative uh, tools to help them with uh, not only being successful in schools, 
have indicated that it, it provides them the ability to, to move on professionally. So we see the value in these tools. We hope after you uh, get us a, a, a look at Jim's demo today, that you'll get us, uh, you'll be charged up as we are, and uh, we look forward to providing you additional content on the back end. So, without further ado, the real uh, reason you're here today, I'm going to turn it over to my uh, colleague Jim. Jim, take it on. Hey, thanks very much, Tony. All right, I'm going to pull up my screen share here. And welcome, everybody. It's so great to see so many people here and to see some of the feedback we've gotten at the beginning of the session. Um, before I dive deep into this, a uh, little bit of background on myself. Uh, I'm a solutions consultant here at Adobe. I work specifically to support our education customers. But before joining Adobe, I was a teacher. I taught in higher education for 21 years. Um, before joining Adobe. So I bring that perspective to things as well. And I'm also an avid content creator, photography, writing, some video work, things along those lines. So I have all those different bits that I bring to the table. And what I'm going to do here is just talk a little bit about, um, before we get into some demo, a bit about the tools themselves. Adobe Express and Firefly. Uh, I, I, Express is a content creation powerhouse. It is a great way to be able to access tools, to tell your story, to ideate, to share content, um, to collaborate uh, without even having to worry about getting back to a specific desktop because the, the tools themselves are based in the cloud. And what can Express do? I've given a short list here of some of the things that I use it for all the time. Uh, image creation and design video editing, animation, uh, creating infographics, reports and presentations. I do a lot of writing. I create a lot of presentations for work, but I also do a lot of storytelling. So I utilize these tools on a regular, I would almost say almost daily basis. Uh, you can use them for long form web stories or self-reflection pieces, um, build out a business pitch or even establish a resume or portfolio. And the other thing that's worth noting too is Express is integrated with Creative Cloud. So you can bring in projects from Photoshop, from Acrobat, PDFs from Acrobat, projects from Illustrator, and import those into Express. So you're not having to rebuild things or restart or reinvent the wheel, if you will, if you've already got those assets in a different format. Now, Firefly, uh, we heard the term. I saw some people know what it is, some don't. It is um, part of the Adobe Sensei machine learning umbrella, if you will. It's our image generation tool, right? And it has a series of different models uh, for, for, for uh, building out vectors, for, for uh, applying effects to text, for generating images, for enhancing or altering images. We're going to see some of this stuff in action today. And one of the things I like to remind people about when we're talking about Firefly is it's how it's differentiated in, 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 the, in the marketplace. What are we doing differently at Adobe that other uh, companies may not be doing, at least not yet? Uh, first of all, anything you create in Firefly is designed to be commercially safe. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. We've got those integrated workflows where we can pull content from Firefly right into, in, into Adobe Express or into our desktop tools. It's enterprise friendly, so it's easy to manage. Uh, it's creator friendly, it's easy to use from an individual's perspective. And also we have approached it from a very ethical mindset. And what I mean by that is Firefly has been trained on three main things. Uh, public domain content, content that's fallen out of copyright, and our 300 million plus catalog of Adobe stock imagery, which we have agreements with our contributors, I happen to be one of them, um, so we can utilize that content to help train Firefly. And our co contributors are compensated for when their images are utilized as part of that training model. So how can Firefly help uh, as a teacher, as a student, as just a, someone who wants to tell a story? It, it is powerful, but it's easy to use. Um, it's a great tool for ideation and brainstorming, for iteration, for refining a concept, for building out a mock-up, for visualizing, visualizing concepts for refining or enhancing images, for creating images from scratch as well, obviously. And then also from a standpoint of um, more academic perspectives, 
maybe uh, gives you a chance as an instructor to refresh or update some learning materials, add some new visuals, give it a little more zip or zang, if you will. And then also, when you're thinking about it from the standpoint of presenting information, you can utilize tools like Firefly to help illustrate concepts or illustrate reports uh, or research that you have been um, uh, been creating. It's basically a creative co-pilot. And in one of the things that these two tools together, Express and Firefly do, is that they really democratize the process of creativity. This tool can be used by anyone. And whether you're a professional creative, whether you're someone who's working in biosciences or, or law or, or wherever it happens to be, there's a way for you to make use of these tools to uh, help tell your story, to help share information, to help socialize uh, something you're, you're, you're really passionate about. Okay, so a couple examples. Just take a look here for a second. This is uh, from BBC, and we're just not going to read the whole thing, but I just want to scroll through a bit here. This is a really good example of online long form journalism, text and images, some really, um, you know, all the information is there, well produced. Okay. Now, take a look here. This is another example of long form journalism. This is actually created with Adobe Express as a web page. Imagery, visuals, uh, uh, professional looking design without having to code any of this, just being able to work with the tool intuitively to create a really um, uh, engaging, dynamic presentation. Another example, we're talking earlier, and Tony was talking about this too, but the need for creative skills and the, uh, the demand for them from hiring managers. Well, here's an example of uh, a student who uh, was uh, in school uh, studying to be a nurse practitioner, and she has built out her resume inside of Adobe Express as a web page to share what she's learned, how the things she's been le learning in school have benefited her and how these skills, including the digital skills that she's showing right here, are going to benefit her future employer. So a really great example of where these tools can come into play and be really, really useful. And then lastly, before we get into actually making some fun stuff, video. Um, Video is the highest consumable asset. I'm, I'm not phrasing that properly, but it is the most popular form of, um, uh, of asset consumption on the web from YouTube, uh, TikTok, where, whatever you happen to see, whether it's uh, where the, wherever that video or reel is being placed, video is hugely popular. And being able to create video has been for the longest time a challenging process, right? You had to know pretty complicated tools, some of which, you know, are ours, like Adobe Premiere Pro, which is a professional level video editing tool. Um, and it be it was a little intimidating, if, if not a lot intimidating, to actually build out a video. Well, I can now use tools like Adobe Express to literally pull in University animation, College. voiceover, music, generated images, and even additional video clips, all inside of this easy to use tool. And then from there, download this as an MP4 or share it out socially, whatever I want to do. And not just that, I'm gonna go and we're gonna take a deeper look into this project here for a quick second. I have multiple versions of this project inside. I've got that, verse, that first video we saw. I've also got a version that's square format for Instagram. Another one I was formatting for TikTok, a derivative of that same video uh, for, for YouTube. And then just, I can build on this and all these assets are kept together in one place for me. So it's really easy to get back to my project and to iterate. And if I want to build something new or want to build off of something I already have, it's as simple as either just clicking on a plus sign to creating a new empty document, or in the case of this video, I'll do the same thing here. I'll select it, and I'm gonna choose here in the upper left corner to duplicate the page. So I didn't have to rebuild anything, right? I can start from this and not affect my original and change the variations, change the background image, change the text, change whatever I want, add additional elements in a really easy manner. Okay. Another example, just going to quickly play a bit of this. 
And this is another video set. All of this was created inside of Express. All the video clips were pulled from Express. Express has a direct connection to our Adobe stock collection. So you can pull video, you can pull stock photography, uh, you can animate your text as you drop it in. We're gonna take a look at some of that process in a moment. But I just wanted to give you a sense of the kinds of things that can be done. It's not just about uh, just about graphics, right? It's the whole It's the whole shooting match. You can be as creative as you want. You're really only limited by the kinds of things you may want to do. And one last example, I'm not going to play any of this. I'm just going to walk through it. Um, and let me just go right back to the beginning. We started this process off, and this is the challenge a lot of people have when they are trying to create something new, especially if you're not, if you don't think of yourself as a creative, you don't know where to start. Where do I begin? Well, in a case like this, Express comes to the rescue as well, because I can start with a template. And that's exactly what you see here. This is a template that was inside of Adobe Express. I wanted to use it to promote my, my after my after school uh, uh, Frisbee golf club. And I started off with this and I would just continue to add elements, add a new background, change the name, add additional text, maybe some animation, and really sort of flesh this out into something that started off as one thing, but I've, I've evolved it into um, a new communication piece that uh, I feel is going to be really suitable uh, for showcasing my, not just the, my, my club, but getting people interested in joining up, if you will. Okay. All right. So enough examples. Let me get over to Adobe Express. This is the Adobe Express website. And there's a lot going on, but I, I wanted to give you a quick sort of rundown. The very top, you can search for anything. Essentially, it's inside of Express. That could be templates. It could be your own files. It could be photos. It could be Creative Cloud libraries. Uh, it could be backgrounds or design assets. You can search for anything in that search bar if you're not really sure where to begin. Over on the left-hand side, that big purple plus button, that's how you get started. One of the ways, you just click that plus sign, and it's going to give you a starting point. What do you want to do? Do you want to create a square uh, graphic? Do you want to create a landscape graphic that might be for video? Do you have a very specific um, goal in mind, social media channel like Instagram, for example? Maybe I want a portrait post. Well, I can get that started right here by choosing Instagram portrait. So I'm not even having to worry about what size is that supposed to be? What size, what aspect ratio is TikTok or, or uh, a YouTube video? That's all covered for me by choosing the kind of thing I want to create. So if I just clue, choose Instagram uh, portrait post, you'll see the format come up. It starts off with a blank page, and that's okay because I can start building out my own content. Now, maybe in this case, what I want to do is say, um, oh, let's do something where we're we're doing a fundraiser for maybe it's a maybe it's a bake sale. Let's call it a bake sale. Why not? So I can start looking for uh, stock images. I can search here for um, for baked goods or buns or muffins or donuts or whatever, but I can also use something, uh, call, I can use Firefly to actually create that image for me. So if I can't find exactly what I'm looking for in stock, or if I don't want to spend a lot of time searching, I can just choose the portrait landscape in this case. I'll size that window appropriately. Maybe something like this. Right now it's all blank, but don't worry, because with the power of my own mind, I'm going to go ahead and type in here, selection of pastries on a wooden table. Oops. And make sure I spell things right because I'm always mistyping when I'm doing things live. There we go. Uh, on a wooden table, photograph, photo quality, uh, studio lighting. I'm putting in some extra little bits of description here for Firefly to help it along. And I can also further control that by choosing the content type. Now, I definitely want a photo in this case. I can play with different styles. There's lots here to pick from. If I want something that is um, a specific look and feel, I can go through uh, these different effects if I feel they're necessary. In my case here, 
I'm not going to need any of those for this particular example, but I could play around with that after the fact if I think I need something else. So then all I've got to do is click generate. And within a few seconds, Firefly is going to give me four choices to work with that uh, hopefully one of which will be what I'm looking for. There we go. I can just move through these and you'll see them pop up on my canvas area. Ooh, that one looks good. That one also looks tasty. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with this one though. And I can take this image, I can drop it anywhere I want, I can resize it. You know, I can scale up, make it the full image size if I want to. And then from there, I can decide, you know what? I need a background for this as well. So what I can do is I can go into my elements here and go to backgrounds and type in, um, let's try a warm color abstract background. See what I get. Okay, not too shabby, right? I think I'm going to go with this one. So I'm able to drop these images in immediately and start building off on my, my, my plan here. So maybe I'm going to bring that image out like there. I could also crop this image if I don't like the look. I can use the crop tool here over on the left-hand side, maybe turn it into a circular crop like so, and just press the return key to click away to lock that into place. Actually, I kind of like that. All right. And then I can bring in text. There's my text tool. I've got access to hundreds or thousands of fonts from Adobe Fonts. I can even, if I'm really stuck on how do am I going to sort of stylize the text because typography and, and, and things, that's a whole thats a whole art and science in itself. Um, but I've got great guidance here right inside the Express Properties panel. I can choose here, let's say titles. And I'm given a whole bunch of different titles that might work for me. Right, and I can scroll through and see if I find something I like. And I'm gonna go with, I think, I'm gonna go with this one and just drop it into place. And I'm gonna change this to bake sale fundraiser, whoops. And there we go. I've got a couple of little pieces in here as well. So there's a little, little word there of, I'm going to get rid of that by selecting it in our layers panel. And then I'm just going to grab this text, stretch it out. There we go. Bear with me for a second. There we are. I can change the styling of this. I can change the fonts. I can go ahead and set this up in a different kind of look and feel. Maybe I want it to uh, sort of, ooh. Oh, I like how this is coming together. I promise this was not even rehearsed, but I can start to play around with uh, how I'm gonna match shapes and paths and things like that right away. If I don't like that, not a problem, right? It's all text. I can change that to, let's go with something dynamic where it's gonna sort of fill the entire text area. And I probably want to finish this off with uh, some dates and times and things along those lines. But for now, let's do one more thing here. Let's make this a little more lively, right? Right now it's a static graphic. It's just a couple pictures or a picture and a text, piece of text. Let's have this be a little more visually appealing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that graphic, that photograph, and over on the left-hand side, where it says animation, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on that and I'm gonna choose to animate this in. Now I have lots of choices here on what I will actually want to work with. Oops, get, let's get back out of there, go back to my, my uh, animate in. And while there are lots of choices, just like PowerPoint and transition, just because you have a lot doesn't mean you need to use them all. I, I tend to be like to keep things really simple here and I'm gonna go ahead in this case uh, with a fade, something nice and easy, all right? So that's going to show how that's going to play. I can change the duration, maybe make that a little longer, and then maybe change its sort of visual impact. There we go. And then the, the bake sale, same idea. Select that text and ch choose animation, choose animation in. And in this case, I think I will bring this, uh, slide it up from the bottom. Okay, 
So now I've got these elements in my timeline right down here in the bottom of the screen. And I can actually see, if I click on text or the image, I can see what's going on. So I might want this photograph to come in right away. And then I might want the text to sort of follow along. So as I click on each element inside my layout, I'm actually getting control over their timing. So maybe I'll just set this about here, maybe about there. So now what's going to happen is I click the play button. In seconds, I've created not just a graphic um, from scratch to announce my fundraiser, but I've also turned it into an animated graphic, which I can then either download, okay, as an MP4, or if I want the static graphic, I can still do that. I can download a JPEG, a PNG, or even a PDF. And the other option I've got is I can share this. So I can share it in a couple different ways. And this is important, that concept of you know, remote work and, and collaboration is not just about being in the office anymore, or being in the classroom. You, people are working and studying from all different locations, right? That's one thing that has not it's maybe lessened a bit now that the pandemic is not as uh, scary as it was, but it is something that is definitely people do like to have that option of being able to work or collaborate from different locations. So I can add people to this uh, project and they can collaborate with me live as I'm doing this, but I can also publish it right to the web and create a, a hyperlink that I can share with people, or I can schedule a post for some of my, my more popular uh, social media channels that I'm a member of. And I've even got direct links to posting on all of them down here and even pushing out to various storage options like OneDrive and Dropbox and so on. Okay, one thing I didn't mention as I was building this is that not one time did you see me say, and now I need to save the file. And that's because Express is saving this work as I go. I will change my title up here from the generic title that Express gave me to um, Baking Fundraiser. So it will be easier for me to locate too, because I can search for that text if I'm looking for it later on. All right. So in a matter of minutes, I've gone from a blank canvas to a, a good starting point for building out my social media graphic. Now, not only can I do this, I can decide after the fact, you know what, I've got this Instagram portrait style, but I really think I need to do something that's going to be more for TikTok or for YouTube. Well, I can choose to resize this document. And you can see all the different choices I've got here. Maybe I want to do an Instagram square post, maybe a TikTok video. All right. And maybe, heck, why not? Let's just throw a YouTube uh, piece in there as well. So I can now take these three other new sizes I want and choose duplicate and resize. And I'm given all three pieces that I need to work with. I just have to scale things and move them into the right places. But I didn't have to worry about aspect ratios. I didn't have to worry about um, uh, copying and pasting the graphics or the text. They're all there. If I click on these guys, we'll see that as I scroll through, there's my text. I just need to reposition things appropriately. So in a matter of seconds, I, I'm ready to to share my my uh, my communication, my my idea, my story out. All right, I'm gonna step back here for a second. One last thing I want to show you because one of the first things I showed you was building out web pages, long form web pages, and how easy this is. So again, we go to our plus sign, and all I've got to do here is type in the word web. And there is my option, web page, my own one of two options, web banner, which would be a graphic, and web page, which is actually the ability to create a dynamic HTML-based web page. So I can go ahead in here, add a title, and I'm just going to go stick with the same theme, baking fundraiser, add a subtitle, support your club. Oops, there we go. And from here, I can start making that impact that I want, right? I want to have a nice powerful image to start off with. So I click on this plus sign at the very bottom of the screen. This is going to give me my, my cover image. And again, I can uh, upload from my device. I can search stock photos. And in this case, I'm going to go to stock. In this case, I'm going to go and choose uh, baked goods. And these are all actual stock photography from our Adobe stock collection. And let's grab something that looks 
kind of yummy. There we go. Great. I'm gaining weight just by looking at this photograph. And then I just scroll down and you'll see at the very bottom of the screen, I can start adding more content. All right. So there we go. I'm just going to move that uh, little uh, connect thing out of the way. And I can add photos, additional photos. I can add text. I can add hyperlink buttons. I can add GIF animations. I can uh, connect to video either through Vimeo or YouTube, or if I've created a video in Express, I can use that link when I publish the video as another way to uh, drop video into my presentation. I can even add something like a photo grid, which is just basically, well, what it sounds like, a grid of photos. And things like some really neat layout tools, like the Glide Show, where I can choose some images. Let's grab this one. Let's grab another one that's not too, 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 too busy. Oh, that's a good one there. And these become the backgrounds for my content. And it takes a second for them to load up to the high resolution versions, but there you go. I can take this little dialog box here and I can type in scrumptious, I'll just go text, scrumptious goodies. I can even format this text, make it a heading one like so, or maybe a heading two, that's better. I can continue to add text or other videos or, again, hyperlinks and so on. And I just scroll through and there's my other image. So I can basically create a really engaging, visually appealing presentation. And then when I've got all that ready to go, I can decide, do I want to change the, the general look and feel, like the theme? You know, I've got options here to change how that is going to be presented. Maybe I want to have another stock theme here. Maybe... Uh, Oh, well, let's take a look at whimsy, right? So this changes uh, some of the visual treatments. It changes the fonts. It changes a little bit of the uh, animation effects that might appear, colors of text, things along those lines. I can pick whatever I like. I think I'm actually going to go with Baldwin. There we go. And once I'm ready to go, again, I don't have to save this, although I will change the name to Baking Fundraiser webpage. My next step is to actually share this out. So there's the share button. I can also invite collaborators, by the way. But in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and publish it to the web. And there's my title. I've got spelling errors. I'm going to change this from the from the title that was there to fundraiser for the club. I can put in additional credits, people who may be, have helped me with this or photo credits, that kind of thing, and just choose to create a link. Once I do this, uh, this is being published up on the web. It's hosted on Adobe servers with a, with a persistent URL, which means even if I come back to this tomorrow or next week or next month and update this and add more information or change the pictures, uh, as long as I publish those changes, everyone will always have the most current version of my my uh, my presentation. So there's my URL. If I create a brand new web page here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. And there we go. There it is in all its glory. Right now, there's not much to it, but um, in the interest of time, I just wanted to give you a, sort of a... a, a cooking show version of, of how to get this content created and published. And in fact, um, I'll mention as well, if I go back to my main presentation here, this is also created inside of Adobe Express. In my case here, I've used generative, um, Firefly's generative uh, imagery it, across most of my, uh, my presentation, because I just have so much fun uh, working with these tools. Okay, so, that is pretty much my show. And I want to give people time to ask questions. And I know Tony's got some, some follow-up he wants to do. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and hand it back to Tony. Wow. Jim, every time I see uh, you do one of these demos, every time I see the, the features and the content available and how you very smoothly transition from uh, one type of uh, web, web format to another. I'm just blown away. And I see this stuff every day. So 
I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as I did. Jim is a wizard at this and uh, one of our uh, valuable colleagues that uh, show us what these tools can do. The uh, QR code that you see now, I invite you to lift up your camera, take a picture of that. Uh, you'll get access to some of Jim's content. Uh, you'll get access to that study uh, that I indicated where uh, career careers are being impacted by digital capabilities. So I hope you'll take a look at that, download that, and, and uh, review it again, and take another look at uh, Jim's content. Um, what we're also providing is some uh, information here around some links down at the bottom of the page here that you can refer to and, and click on and, and uh, get additional information about some of the areas that Jim talked about, also some canned information that we can provide some training sessions. We have a number of links here that uh, will be useful for you. So again, we invite you to uh, take advantage of those links. What I wanna summarize with uh, before we close it out and ask you for any uh, Q&A that you might have is that you, we hope you have a better understanding of the power of Express and Firefly. But more importantly, we hope you have a better understanding of the power and the value to student access, no matter the discipline or area of study. And uh, what we're hoping that you'll do is uh, take the, the next step uh, in your institution organization and we'll look at ways where you can ramp up uh, not only your student capabilities, uh, but your faculty and staff cap capabilities for uh, providing creative content in a digitized format for better communication and uh, idea exchange. And uh, with that, I'll leave you with one last quote. and. Uh, and uh, we can follow up with questions. Students need to be continually developing skills and marketing themselves to new employers. Adobe enables students to learn how to build a presence and amplify their voices. We look forward to seeing how these lessons will help them prepare for jobs and impact the communities around them. I couldn't agree with this more. I hope that this resonates with you as well. And uh, we, again, we thank you very much for uh, your time today and uh, look forward to uh, answering questions. What we ask you to do is to explore the links below. Uh, for those of you that would like to take a deeper dive, we're gonna be doing uh, some follow-up uh, demos and um, webinars, one on um, um, March 28th, another one on April 30th. Please uh, take advantage of those sessions. They kind of uh, build on each other. And uh, we'd like to turn it over for Q&A now. Thank you, Jim. You're very welcome. And even the dogs like it. So we're in good shape. There's been some phenomenal questions uh, um, in, in the chat pod here. Um, and I, I, I don't think I can get to all of them. Yeah, but I do I, wanna... Jim, I've, I've got it. Oh, you um, do? Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. My name is yep. Lori Strauss. And I am a senior uh, Express Specialist at Adobe, so I'm glad to be here. And um, Jim and Tony, great content today. We've had a lot of questions coming through the chat pod. I've tried to answer them um, as they come along. But I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Jim, shoot some questions over to you. So yeah. is Adobe Express online, or do we need to download it? This is one of the best things about Adobe Express, beyond all of its creative capability. There's nothing to install. It's web only, and we have a mobile app as well. Uh, we have a currently we have a beta uh, version of what you saw today um, that's being tested out and should be released soon. Um, so there's nothing unless you're putting it on your phone. There's nothing to install. You just go to uh, express.adobe.com and uh, sign in with either your school credentials, your uh, your uh, subscriber Adobe ID, or your free Adobe ID and have at it. Awesome. Okay, one of the um, one of the folks on the call was following along with you, Jim. And mm. when you texted, uh, when you input the text to image, it popped up four images for you. But when that person put it in, it popped up four different images for them. 
Is there a reason why they didn't get the yes, same? Yes, that's an excellent question. The 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 uh, generative uh, generative AI, whether it's Firefly or other other uh, other providers of the service, it's kind of like Forrest Gump in the box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, and you certainly won't get the same thing as me, uh, because literally every time you ask a question or ask it to, to create something, it's literally creating it from the ether. So no two um, no two people typing exactly the same words will ever see exactly the same thing, which is great, and can be obviously a little challenging if you're trying to do a match. But there are ways to sort of keep that in line. We didn't really have the ability to time to do it here, but you can inside of the uh, the main Adobe Firefly website, you can actually do things uh, with images, supply your own image to do a bit of a style match to get something similar. It won't be exact, but it'll pull in things like colors and brightness and uh, overall ambiance to help uh, generate images that are more in keeping with the specific type of, of image you wanna go with. But that's just the the beauty in the uh, of, of generative AI. It's it literally is incredibly random what you get every single time. Hey, there's um there's actually a question. So when you're using this to generate images, um, it sounds like you have to use credits. Um, if I use the credits in Firefly, does it take away from credits in Express? Um, the credits are credits or credits or credits basically for 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 uh, for a firefly they're called generative credits so if you use them in express and you're generating content uh with with the firefly capabilities yeah it'll use the credits you have as as a user right now keep in mind that um that unless you're a free subscriber to uh to adobe creative cloud that you're um what happens is if you do use up all of your credits uh you just get put in the slow lane for processing of your images so things don't happen quite as fast if you are using a free version of creative cloud the free adobe id then you get 25 credits per month and they replenish each month so keep that in mind sometimes if you what i recommend is if you have um uh, some concerns over consuming them start with stock Start with the Adobe stock search inside of Express. That stuff doesn't cost anything beyond, you know, you've got your membership, whether it's free or paid, you'll get access to stock imagery. And you can start there and see if you can find what you want there. And if you can't, if you really are looking for something specific, that's maybe when you employ Firefly and generative AI. Thanks, Jim. As usual, a great answer. Um, question about um, creating the web page, like when you go to publish it. First of all, can it be private? And second, can you make it custom? In other words, instead of saying new dot Adobe Express dot dot dot, can it be like Jim's Bakery dot com right. or something like that? Yeah, uh, those are both really good questions. Um, the first one about uh, privacy, uh, private publications. Anything you publish through the through that publication uh, dialogue is technically public, right? It's a web page. However, um, you might have noticed the ridiculous URLs that are produced. They're pretty um, obfuscated. So while it's public, you got to really know where to go looking to find it. So if it is something that is uh, you really are concerned about being private, or is and, and or you're or you're you're putting up information, or you may be putting up information you feel is sensitive, like maybe it's research information, you want to think twice about that because it does end up publicly uh, available. You can always unpublish and delete if you need to. Um, regarding the actual URL itself, uh, because it is hosted uh, through the Adobe servers, you can't really control um, the URL um, itself uh, by any means. So you could use a like a bit.ly short link or something like that if you wanted to, to sort of shorten things up and make it a little more readable. But um, at this time anyway, with uh, with Adobe Express, you can't control that uh, the the actual formatting of that URL. Okay. Jim, if a user wanted to collaborate with someone during their project, does that person have to have Adobe Express? And or do they have to work within their institution? Or can you have someone on the outside co-collaborate with you? Um, they'll have to have access to Adobe Express to collaborate, yes. So they'll need some form of um, membership 
Um, I believe even the free membership will give collaborators uh, basic access. Um, they don't have to be in the same domain unless um, your school has set up any kind of domain protections that can be done by, by IT. So um, if you try to collaborate or try to share something that doesn't work, chances are they've put up a digital fence around that content so it doesn't get out uh, in the wild in that sense. But the short answer is yes, you can collaborate. No, you don't. And yes, you do need to have some form of a subscription or membership to uh, to Adobe Express, even if it's the free one. Okay. There are a couple of questions about accessibility. So I thought maybe you can address, address that, Jim. Mm -hmm. We are um, profoundly aware of uh, the importance of accessibility, especially from an education perspective. Uh, it is something our engineering teams are constantly working on. There are some basic accessibility in Adobe Express for web, uh, but that is something we know we need to work on more. And in fact, um, the, the Express web page that I was showing, that that tool is actually being worked on as we speak to be even more robust. And accessibility is one of the topics that they need to address. Um, in terms of other elements, I noticed uh, somebody also asked about uh, captioning. Uh, there's a new tool inside of Express that allows you to uh, create a video and then download that video once you've created it, or for that matter, even if it's a video you already have, you can upload it and you can use uh, captioning uh, as a quick action inside of Adobe Express to create text-based captions for your video. So that's a different level of accessibility. Um, but it can be done, and it's 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 scary easy to do. Um, literally upload your video using the captioning quick action, um, and Express analyzes your video, puts in an editable text for you. You can change the theme of that text, the colors, the placement, the location, uh, and then you can download a brand new video with burned in um, uh, uh, closed captions. Great. There were two questions I'm going to kind of ask them together. Um, yeah. One is around, does Firefly train on Adobe images, uh, which mm -hmm. avoids the problem of ownership? And second, how do you cite um, the projects when creating things with Firefly? Great, great questions in both cases. Um, yeah, Adobe does only uh, train Firefly on, um, as I mentioned earlier, Adobe stock images, uh, public domain content, and content that's fallen out of copyright. Okay, those are the three areas where Firefly is being trained. Um, as far as ownership is concerned, that, that's that's a whole ball of wax for the lawyers to talk about, frankly. But technically, the argument these days is that if it's generated by AI, there is no ownership per se. There's no copyright from that perspective. Not going to go down that rat hole today. But just be aware, there's tons of articles you can read about that on the web. Um, as far as citing is concerned, I would check with... Um, your own um, uh, processes at your school as to what their recommendations are. You do not need to cite content created with Firefly um, in term, as far as Adobe's concerned. But if the school prefers that, or if you're assigning work to students and you want them to cite it, you'll want to give them appropriate directions on um, or instruction on what you know how to cite that information, whether it's uh, how it was generated in Firefly or what other tool was utilized. However. Um, your school prefers that kind of information to be declared. Okay, thanks, Jim. These two questions are related to Express with Creative mm -hmm. Cloud. Um, mm -hmm. One is, can I can I access the web version from within the Creative Cloud? Like, can I get Express from within Creative Cloud? And then the second part of that is, does Adobe Express interact with libraries for branding and colors and logos from within Creative Cloud? Wow, good question. So yes, um, a, 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 if you are a um, Creative Cloud subscriber uh, for either the entire Creative Cloud or I believe, I believe that's this is where I, I don't want to be quoted on, but if you have, even have single app access, um, paid access, you should have access to uh, Express. Definitely, if you have the full Creative Cloud, you can also uh, access Creative Cloud, or sorry, Express for free without uh, without having a Creative Cloud membership um, in terms of a paid subscriber membership. Uh, the other question was, I just talked myself out of what the question was, sorry. 
Um, oh, access to like the libraries you create. Yes, within. thank you. Yeah. Um, in fact, yes, Express does have access to Creative Cloud libraries, as does Firefly, by that, by, by the way. Uh, if you're working on the Firefly website, firefly.adobe.com, you can actually save content you create directly to a Creative Cloud library, which is super cool. Um, Express, with the exception right now of the web page uh, editor we were looking at, has full access to Creative Cloud libraries as well for, for branding and pulling in colors, things along those lines. Good questions. I know I'm enjoying I'm enjoying them as well. Um, is there a difference between the free version and the premium version that you've been showing, Jim? Yeah. Um, the free version is not as fully featured. Uh, not as many of the quick actions are available for your use. Uh, you don't have access to as many fonts or as many stock images. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you have a, a, a hard cap on how many generations using Firefly that you can create. Okay, I think we have time for one or two more questions. I, there's so many questions coming through. Appreciate everybody asking. Um, I'm going to drop my contact info in the chat pod if you have any questions. I know some... Uh, several questions about pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, put my name here in this pod so that we can have um, an express uh, specialist contact you um, following this call. I know we are going to publish um, a lot of the, well, the recording, and then also um, there's a lot of Q&A here. So mm -hmm. um, last question we'll ask is um, who owns the, create a presentation and express who owns the assets and can it be used for commercial use? Um, I don't know if I've got enough context to answer that properly, but you are the owner of whatever you create. Adobe does not own it. Um, it's your content. You can download it. You can delete it. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, the, uh, when you're building out content with, say, Firefly, for example, you do have an option uh, to submit that to the uh, Firefly community where it might be showcased on the Firefly website. But as far as Adobe is concerned, and this has been the mantra since well before AI or Express came around, is as the creator, you own your content. It is your content. And we don't train the AI on the content you create. We don't use it for any of those kinds of purposes uh, from an enterprise perspective. And uh, from an individual user perspective, uh, you have the option to opt in or opt out of your having your content looked at or studied by Adobe for to improve the applications. Okay, I think we touched on many of the questions. We have some surveys here. I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda to close today. Thank you all. Thanks everyone for joining us. I definitely want to thank our presenters, Tony and Jim, for all of the amazing information and resources and answers to questions. Remember, you will get all of these things in the recording that's sent out via email after the session concludes. We have a couple questions on screen in front of you. What was the level of your satisfaction with this webinar? Is there anything else you would like to learn about in future sessions? And please leave your email if you would like to be contacted by Lori there. We're also going to send her email out uh, in response to a couple of your questions. Um, so thank you very much for attending today. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Great questions, and thank you for your engagement today. Yep.